Dailies today on 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are the nation's number one talk station, 99.3 Nigeria Info. Lagos, good morning to you. Thank you for tuning again. We're back with the second part of Dailies today for today, Monday that is. And it's a pleasure to be here. I am Sheriff Quadri. We're streaming live on Facebook and on YouTube. Nigeria Info 99.3 is how you can watch us live. That is Nigeria Info 99.3. And you can let me know what you think about the stories that we got for you straight out of the papers today. Um, let's start very quickly now. Uh, we're going to start with the Vanguard newspaper. Let's take a look at the front page of the paper. Top manufacturers list woes incur. 266 billionaire losses in one year a story is on page 20 of the vanguard newspaper top manufacturers list woes incur 266 billionaire losses in one year the riders plan further price increase our cost of sales jumped 64 percent that's boa foods economy grappling with cost push inflation a sadori NB, Dangote, others intensify backward integration. Those are the writers to that story in the Vanguard newspaper. Now, let's go take uh, this story on page 10 of the Vanguard newspaper. Ondoguba protest as four APC aspirants call for primary cancellation. The story is on page 10. Ondoguba protest as four APC aspirants call for primary cancellation. Page 10 of the vanguard newspaper now we're going to go take a story on page nine pdp why wk was allowed international caucus meeting sending minority leader a story is on page nine pdp why wk was allowed international caucus meeting senate minority leader it's right here on page nine if you like to read further you can go pick up a paper and read uh, further on page 9 of the Vanguard newspaper. I'm going to flip through to the next set of stories that we want to take uh, this morning. And uh, that will be right here on um, page 8 of the Vanguard newspaper. Intrigues as new Ganduja Ward Exco emerges to suspend national chairman. Intrigues as new Ganduje Ward Exco emerges to suspend national chairman. <laughs> now that story is in, I mean, I don't know what's going on in Kano APC, really. But that's, that's okay. That's okay. It's a beautiful thing about democracy, right? Uh, let's uh, look at uh, our last story from the Vanguard newspaper. Uh, this time we're going to go to page, um, we're going to go to page nine. Let's go back to page nine. And this story reads, Apologize to Northern Elders over statement. Senator Marafat tells Matawali. Apologize to Northern Elders over statement. Senator Marafat tells Matawali. Remember that comment related to Matawali over Northern Elders and their influence in the North. That's right. Oh, well, you can read further in the Vanguard. I've dropped the Vanguard. Let's go pick up the Daily Trust newspaper now. Now, here is this report on the front page of Daily Trust newspaper with a beautiful infographics on the front page. You can see, if you're watching, you can see the infographics here on the front page of the Trust. I, I would um, give you the breakdown. Well, let's um, start with the report. 2,583 Nigerians killed. 2,164 abducted in three months. That's according to report. 2,583 Nigerians killed, 2,164 abducted in three months, report. The writers say we've reduced casualty figures, NSA, says there are over 300 bandit warlords in the north. 300 warlords in the north. Fleeing villagers, storms them for our government house. That story you can read for the pages four and six. Now let's go take a look at the infographics, right? It's a breakdown here. Zones with highest number of killings. Northwest is leading with 793. Uh, northeast, 681. North Central, 596. Southwest, 194. South South, 161. And Southeast, 158. That's the breakdown of zones with highest number of killings. 
Now let's move on to zones with highest number of kidnappings. Northwest, 1,297. Northeast, 421. North Center, 330. That's North Center for you. Southwest, 30. South South, 66. Southeast, 20. That's zones with highest number of kidnappings. Now, let's move on to five states with highest number of killings. Five states with highest number of killings. Take a listen to it. Are you ready? Bornu, 517. Benue, 313. Kaduna, 252. Zamfara, 212. I'll take that again. Katsina, rather. Katsina, 252. Zamfara, 212. And Kaduna, 206. Those are the five states with the highest number of um, killings. Now, top four states with highest number of kidnappings. They wrote four here, but then the infographics displays five. So let's, let's do five. Eh? Five, highest number of um, kidnappings. Kaduna... 546 highest number of kidnappings top five states kaduna 546 zamfara 447 borno 340 kasina 252 and fct 102 so fct displaced zamfara in terms of kidnapping in the top five in terms of killing, Zamfara is there. And Bornu leads in terms of in terms of killing. Bornu leads. In terms of kidnapping, Kaduna leads. You can read further. Beautiful info infographics. Daily Trust newspaper is where you'd uh, get that story in detail. I'm going to drop the paper now. Now let's go to the Guardian newspaper for those who love cars. For those who are trying to buy a car, you want to know the um information about you know shipping car in what kind of car and all of that you can find um a well done job on the front page of the a well researched job on the front page of the guardian newspaper you can read further uh on uh, page three if you no, not page three now let me take a look at it again um that story should be inside the page of um, one of the pages here because it's not stated on the front page here, yeah? Okay. So, but let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Used vehicles on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. I'll come to the telephone in a moment, and then I will take your thoughts on WhatsApp and Facebook, YouTube, as we're streaming live on those two platforms. I'll come take your um, thoughts. Used vehicles import slums, 32% as dealers trade safety for survival. Survey titles. Import slums for used vehicles, though, import slums 32% as dealers trade safety for survival. Salvage titles. Uh, let's, so, so let's, let's uh, li take a look at the breakdown. 80% huh? of vehicles classified as accidented. 80% of vehicles that they are bringing in now classified as accidented. Clean used vehicles average cost is about nine thousand dollars. Clean used vehicles average cost nine thousand dollars. Salvaged car average cost in the US one thousand five hundred dollars. Salvaged car average cost in the US one thousand five hundred dollars. Seventy percent. Plying Nigerian roads are used cars. 70% plying Nigerian roads are used cars. Average repair cost of salvage car in Nigeria is $300 compared to $2,500 in the US. If you are to fix these salvage cars in the US, you will spend $2,500. But if you're fixing them here in Nigeria, it's $300. So if you're looking to replace your old car, perhaps unless you have uh, deep pockets, then you can go ahead and uh, buy a Belgium, like you always say, a Belgium car. But if you can't, 
please fix the car, the old car that you're using. Fix it very well and uh, continue to enjoy your ride eh? on Lagos Ibado. <laughs> Okay, let's come take your thought. Oh, you know what? Let's take it. Let's take a few more stories. I've got about uh, a few seconds to kill. Uh, it's almost seven forty-two. So let, let's take this one here. I've got this one that says Con- condemnation trail on door APC Guba primaries. That story is on page five of the Guardian newspaper. Condemnation trails on door APC Guba primaries. Page five of the Guardian newspaper. Bandits kill six soldiers, two vigilantes in Niger, civilians in Zamfara. Sokoto, that story is on page 21 of the Guardian newspaper. World Bank pre-qualifies Nigeria for, quote, friendly $2.25 billion loan. That story is on page 3. World Bank pre-qualifies Nigeria for, quote, friendly Two point two five billion dollars loan, page three of the Guardian newspaper. So I'm gonna drop the Guardian. Let's come take your thoughts now. O two o one four six five seven one nine zero. That is O two o one four six five seven one nine zero. Everyone has got sixty seconds to share their thoughts with me this morning. Sixty seconds, if you like to share your thoughts. All right. And please turn off your radio if you're calling me, uh, and go straight to the point. That would help a lot in saving time. Let's jump on it. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning to you. Uh, this Friday for me, Willery. Talk to me Friday. We are talking about uh, Kano Adaguji. The most funny part of it is the two fashion. They, they still suspend any. When I was reading it, the evil, the secretary of the second fashion, mm-hmm. is, is the solemn is Danguji. <laughs> <laughs> I, we don't know what's going on in that part. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to suspend Ganduji. <laughs> How can junior brother come out to suspend the other brother? <laughs> and he said that uh, they should go arrest those people who suspended him before. Mm-hmm. And then they are suspending him. <laughs> Why should they go arrest those people that suspended him before? Right. right. Cherry, this is how uh, Oshamole problem started. We were yeah. suspended for the world. Oh, okay. <laughs> Danguji <laughs> cannot survive this because everybody has suspended him. Thank you very much. Thank you to you. The, the main question is, what is the party doing about it? I mean, is the party just folding their arms and looking for, or just waiting it out and see what would happen? I mean, what's the protection for their national chairman like? As a national chairman turned to a burden for them, for the entire party, because ordinarily the party would have swept in, they would have um, sanctioned some people for anti-party activities, they would have done this, they would have done that, but in this Ganduje case, everybody just watching. Good morning to you. Good to hear your voice again, Sheriff. Morning, good, good to morning. hear you. Morning. Welcome, Emeka. Welcome. You see, as you were reading out the highest state in terms of kidnapping and uh, Whole, uh, lot of I'm, I'm getting some noise. Oh, sorry, I've turned it off. Okay. So, as we were in at the uh, list of states leading the kidnapping and the rest of them, right. I was just wondering, during the campaign, the mm. vice president assured Nigerians that he would be in charge of security. Of security. Sir, where are you, Mr. Vice President? What is going on? Mm. From the northeast to the northwest to all over the country, there's one form of violence or the other. If a terrorism is going on, whether they're bandits or whether I want to call them terrorists because they're terrorizing the Nigerian state. Mm. What is happening? Are we spending enough money on intel? Look at the way I was, uh, uh, I was just killed in Niger state. Yeah. Before entering an environment, whatever happened to these drones? You now have UAPs all over the place. Mm. Drones to, to carry out some kind of reconnaissance and, you know, surveillance. Yeah. Find out what is happening in the area where you're about to go into. Yeah. The way we're losing personnel is disturbing because we're talking about people's husbands, people's children, who are rendering a lot of women into uh, widows, mm. rendering children orphans and the rest of that. It's so alarming. And before you know it, it's going to engulf the whole, whole country if it is not stemmed in the board right now. Okay. I am so worried. And talking about the uh, friendly loan from the IMF, yeah. please, let it be properly monitored. I don't, I don't understand all these loans we're getting. There's no impact in the life of Nigerians. Mm. Well done, Shadi. Keep up the good work. Emeka, thanks for calling me. I appreciate your time. Let's jump on another call now. Nigeria Info, good morning to you. Mr. Sheriff, good, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. My name is Robert. This uh, on do APC, whatever. Okay. That uh, I get that. I get that. I get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
mean, why can't he, is it compulsory that he must be among those who want to rule the state? Why shouldn't well, why shouldn't why shouldn't they run again? Is his right uh, to run again? Most of the deputies say, why are they always not seeing this ambition for God's sake? Kenodo Lu was my man, and I believe he was everybody's man mm. because of especially this Amoteku something. Okay. They always stand for the. You are his uh, deputy, and uh, the I mean, uh, how do I call it now? The things I mean, a very life later make you the governor of the state. Why can't you just uh, after this your something finish and uh, allow other people that are neutral that have not tested that thing to go there and rule this thing? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he don't hasn't. He hasn't done anything wrong. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, he hasn't done anything wrong. But uh, the, the way I'm looking at it is, uh, is like I'm sorry to use uh, it's a bit of ambitious, just like what is happening in this thing. Okay. Most of the deputy governors, they want, after they, 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 they finish their whatever, they want to be governor too. Yeah? Really they are, most of them are too ambitious, you understand? Mm-hmm. If I were him, because of the death of that man, I will not go back there. I will just... You know, and- you know Joe Biden was once uh, Barack Obama's deputy. Now he's the president of America. So it, there's really nothing wrong about it. I mean, but being a deputy governor doesn't mean, doesn't mean that um, you shouldn't run for the main man's office. It's really nothing, you know, yeah. It depends on the party now if they want to go with the deputy governor or they want to pick another person or another separately, two new people uh, that will represent, that will uh, be their standard bearer in the next election in their respective countries or their states, you know. Uh, There's really nothing wrong with somebody having ambition to run. Good morning to you. Good morning, my beloved brother. Good morning, sir. Yeah, I'm B.A. Akimbo. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, honestly, the figures being reported this morning are mm. just too stag- staggering to, con- to to cope with okay. the killings, the kidnapping. And I think, sincerely, the time has really come for mm. those that kept Nigeria one during the Civil War, those that ensured that this nation did not break, mm-hmm. should come together now. The likes of Obasanjo, the likes of uh, to, to, to come and do what quickly now, to quickly to, to come and do the what. The first thing is to have to come together and uh, fashion the way out of all these problems. Okay. To tell us to have a national meeting. This regime cannot cope with this thing. It keeps increasing by the day, and mm. this is not the way to go. Before all of us are consumed, they should mm. come together round table meeting and fashion out the way for this nation to move forward. Thank you, sir. That's the best way to go. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for calling me. Let's go to Facebook. We're streaming live on Facebook. Nigeria Info 99.3 is how you can watch live on Facebook. Nigeria Info 99.3. And we're also live on YouTube. Nigeria Info 99.3. Let's start with this comment here. S.L. Gene on Facebook says, we're going to borrow and keep borrowing until we follow OB." And Mohalu's advice and manufactured goods and services and allow the free market work its magic in the power and uh, petrol sector, which means removal of um, subsidies and costs, refineries, tariffs, like some other African countries. I expect the federal government not to heed uh, my advice because their stupidity and foolishness is uh, irredeemable. Uh, that's um, Don Esogene dropping his words there on Facebook. We're going to move on now to WhatsApp. Okosun is in Aja. Okosun says, The killings of Nigerian soldiers uh, might continue until some greedy officers change their mindset from insatiable corrupt status and give soldiers all they need, arms and ammunition, sumptuous warfare packages and exposure and expose them to more trainings, etc. Secondly, Nigerian government must separate politics from security matters where any country that plays politics and religion with security will bleed. Hence, Nigeria ne- Nigeria is bleeding. Give a military free hand. In six months, you see exponential overwhelming of organized criminal gangs. Um, politicians are also not helping Nigerian state. Okosun Dennis dropped that on our WhatsApp platform. So let's take another message on WhatsApp, then we go to um, YouTube, right? I've got this message here that says, on the rate of killing and kidnapping in Nigeria, when you look at the numbers, you think we are in a war 
even the figure is not correct from my rating uh they should add 2000 in every of their calculations please tell mr kofi to be reading my messages okay kofi is listening to you and he will read your messages yeah he will read your messages mm. and it's not personal trust me it's, it's not it's not because you are uh, yeah it's, it's not about you really uh isaiah onoche says we have the data of those killed but the killer are, no, are unknown this is pathetic um so the killers are, un, are not unknown don't don't get that wrong i mean just last week the numbers of um warlords uh that were killed by the military i think about eight or so they were warlords or just warlords alone um about eight or so the leaders of some um bandit groups and now we are hearing that we have about 300 of them um spread across the north central northwest and northeast so it's not that we don't know them uh their names no of course we do know them that's why they were declared wanted if you've been tracking the news you know that some of them their picture and everything their pictures were there in, in the public spaces uh being declared wanted by the nigerian state so yeah i'm gonna go to youtube now Blair Anya says these numbers are human lives with hopes dreams aspirations just extinguished like nothing the security architecture of the country has truly and woefully failed being Paola on YouTube says NNPC should be on the watch list of those who are trying to remove Ganduje, but they will fail. Kwenkweso should be told to stay with NNPC, NNPP, not NNPC, sorry, NNPP, and be content. Uh, Ganduje will remain as chairman. That's being Paola. I don't know why you're fingering Ganduje in all of this. Kwenkweso, <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I really don't know why, really. Okay. Um, let, let's go take another comment quickly now. I've got this one here. And it says, uh, Corey, Corey says, our GDP under, under, so I don't know the beginning. I don't know how you put this, but um, it's quite, you know, misleading. Perhaps you can send that back uh, in so that I can take it again because you missed me at some point there on youtube says about insecurity statistics the problem is purely political uh, when buhari came into office he moved military leaders to the heart of the trouble zone and uh, we're still here it is pure politics that's Adeye on youtube who dropped that in i'm gonna head back to telephone now it's 7:53 right now let's take a few more calls good morning to you good morning sir good morning how are you good thank you. Your family? good good thank you my name is Let's hear you. What's your story? You see these uh, Kano people. Sheriff, what is the value of Gandhi J in Kano now? He couldn't deliver the state to his party. Sympathetically, they gave him, they nominated him for a uh, chairmanship of APC. Hmm. If he were the one, would he be going for Kwan Kwasu and his millions of uh, Kwan Kwasu people who voted for him and took over Kano? If you go and check well, I, APC hierarchy, they have had in that, uh, uh, what do you call it, remove him in, from the world. This one, Dangote will remove so him. So you feel that you feel it's the party I, trying I, to uh, uh, one remove him? Inside from the top, they want Kwankwa so to come into APC. Okay. Because Kwankwa so must have given them a decision that, hey, I don't want to see that guy there. Okay, we'll remove him and bridge your people. Hmm. What is NMPP? Hmm. Hey, hey. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Oh, wow. Politics in Nigeria is quite unpredictable, yeah? No permanent friend, no permanent enemy. Only about permanent interest. That's all politics in Nigeria is all about. Good morning to you. Morning. Good morning. Yes, please. Morning to you. Okay. I want to talk about the killing. Yes, please. Let's hear you. Let's hear you. Okay. My name is Chido Zee from oh. West Park. Welcome. Okay. Today makes it exactly 35 years of Gideon Oka 1989 Cube. I was a seven-year-old child then. That's some state he mentioned in his school speech. Okay. Look at those killings, the states with the highest number of killings. And go and come, listen to check that speech and look at the state he mentioned. Those states are where those killings are still highest. Hmm. Nothing has changed in Nigeria since then. I start to restructure this country and make internal security the function of the governors. Hmm. The Abuja control and command form of security mechanism we operate cannot secure lives and property. Hmm. We need to restructure this country. Okay. The people in power now, they've been the most intelligent people in politics ever since I was born. They had all the solutions, restructuring, through federalism, everything. Now, the ball is in their court to do the needful. Restructure the country, 
state police, everything they've been advocating for, now is the time for them to implement it. I don't know what they're waiting for. If they fail to restructure this country, then there's no hope for this country. Thank you. Thank you to you for calling me. Appreciate it. Nigeria Info, good morning to you. Good morning, Noga Sharif. Good morning to you. My take is about the Undo election. All right. I don't know when our politicians will allow the true democracy to take to to take its course. You are a city governor, and if your people actually want you, you need to do the needful. The yesterday election, I mm. believe the first election in Undo, mm. is internal election, or but you need to see it, Sherry. Mm. It's my place. I don't understand. Must you rule people at all costs? It's like Nigeria has another definition for democracy. I our, don't our, understand. Our, our own brand is different. Our br- oh, thank you. Especially this Pastor Ladipo. calling from Morile. China. Thank you. So, Adipo, thank you. Thank you for calling me. Appreciate it. So, I'm going to go to take this message and then we'll, we'll um, call it a morning, okay? Corey says, our GDP under PDP peaked at $600 billion under APC in 2023. It was under um, $260 billion. APC is definitely taking us back in time. Nothing progressive, just straight up retrogression. Um, you said our GDP under PDP peaked at $600 billion. Um, and then on the APC, it was under 260 billion in to, an APC in 2023. That's that's how you put it. Uh, but um, let's let's go to Naira metrics and uh, go find out if you if you're right or wrong. So Nigeria's GDP under APC in 2023 November is actually worth around 600 billion, not 200 plus billion that you have said um Corey, if you got further proofs please forward it huh? i'd like to see but that's what my metrics um put out nigeria's gdp uh is worth around 600 billion in 2023 uh not the what do you call it again not the 260 billion that you called it but that is where we'll leave it for this morning okay thank you all for being a part of daily today i'll hand you back to kofi right now on the continuation of the morning crossfire. Then after we have a fintech show for you after the news at the top of the hour at nine. I'm Sharif Quadri Lagos. You have a beautiful day. Bye for now. Is your heart racing because your MTN line is blocked? You can't make calls. You can't receive calls. Not even text messages. Nothing at all. What about bank alerts? All these happened because you haven't linked your NIN to your MTN line. Unblock your MTN line today by linking it to your NIN. Rush to any nearby MTN. Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on.